Plants can be beautiful. Who doesn't love flowers? But some plants are far more peculiar than you may think. Some plants are very odd indeed. These are the 20 strangest plants on Earth. Number 20. Nepenthes According to Darwin, millions of years ago, a bunch of plants went through a series of changes and adaptations that meant that they evolved the ability to eat meat. This plant looks strange, doesn't it? Sounds wild, but that's what carnivorous plants do. Plants like the Venus flytrap is famous for this sort of bloodthirsty behavior. Those kinds are especially interested in eating small insects. There are other kinds of carnivorous plants with much more surprising tastes. These are nepenthes a type of tropical pitcher plant. They're known as pitcher plants on the account of their shape, which is said to resemble a pitcher or jug of sorts. These plants have often found themselves growing in nutrient-deficient soils and have therefore developed adaptations to help them survive these difficult conditions. They've developed these mechanisms that allow them to coax, capture, and ingest insects and some other kinds of prey as well. These unusual diets give the plants the phosphorus and nitrogen that they need to grow and sustain themselves. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Living Stones, Lithops. These are not rocks, even though they have every appearance of being just that. These are in fact living plants. This plant looks strange, doesn't it? Lithops are a type of succulent that is incredibly slow growing. They'll grow for years and years and still barely poke out even an inch about the ground. They originated in South Africa where the local names for them mean cattle hoof or sheep's hoof, which seems to be a bit more descriptive than the stone names that they have been granted. These plants appear in the way that they do because they have adapted to be camouflaged in their natural environments in much the same way that many animals have done as well. These small succulents can be found in Namibia and South Africa in abundance, and both of these native places they've adapted so well that they're very difficult to actually spot on the ground at all. Both the main places that these plants are found are extremely dry and have, on average, an annual rainfall of less than 20 inches, with some areas even experiencing as little as 4 inches a year. So given the limited supply of water and especially long dry seasons, these little plants are able to get the most of the moisture that they need from the mist and the fog, which is remarkable. Number 18. The Baseball Plant these are some strange looking plants, and again, they are a kind of succulent, but this time, they've cleverly disguised themselves as baseballs. Well, sort of. These are of a large group of woody and succulent kinds of plants that grow into a ball shape that's well adapted to very dry and hot climates. These are amongst the plants that are oh so popular with all the plant-loving people these days, and for good reason as well. They require little maintenance and are not much thirsty at all. There are other more more cactusy sorts of plants in this group, but the baseball one is the most interesting due to its unique shape. It was first documented back in 1897, but in the way that often happens when something new and exciting comes to the attention of people, it was then endangered by 1915 because it was so very popular. So there were new restrictions that were put into place for the harvesting of these plants and the use of the seeds to grow these ways emphasized. Nowadays, they're easy to find in garden centers, so that's a relief because growing one from a seed could take a while. Number 17. Giant Water Lily These are the largest members of the water lily family, and look how pretty they are. Found on the ponds of the poshest of places, these giant water lilies can grow to have pads that are up to a massive 8 feet across, so they're not for your average pond in yours or my backyard. These are absolute whoppers. The giant water lily has round and upturned leaves which are supported beneath and held in place by a submerged stalk that can measure up to 26 feet in length. 
This is what plants itself in the bottom of the lake or wherever the plant is growing. And they do grow, in fact they grow incredibly rapidly, sometimes up to 20 inches per day. They grow big white or pink flowers that are said to have a sweet pineapple sort of smell on day one of its two-day life cycle. They really do only bloom very briefly and open up at night, so it's all a bit of a letdown in the big scheme of things. The first night they open they appear white, and the second night they've turned pink, but they will have completely lost their fragrance. This is all a rather temporary sort of affair, so there's no getting attached to these blooms. Blink and you just may miss them. Number 16. Dragon's Blood Tree This one has a name that sounds as if it were straight out of the pages of a fairy tale. The Dragon's Blood Tree is an evergreen that's only found on Yemen's Socotra Archipelago, and it's an ancient and revered tree with a distinct appearance and blood red sap. The open umbrella shape of the Dragon's Blood Tree is utterly unique, and the clusters of these trees on this ancient landscape look as if they were conceived in a fantasy film. But the magic of these trees isn't only in its astonishing appearance, they bear a deep red oozing resin, which gives the tree the appearance of bleeding, but which also has some unique medicinal properties. The sap has been used to treat all manner of ailments from ulcers to diarrhea. It's also famed for its use as a varnish for violins, dyeing wool, glue for pottery, and even as makeup and toothpaste. This is the only place in the world where this extraordinary species of tree grows, and as the climate changes and war continues to rage on the mainland, the future of this unbelievable place looks quite uncertain. Number 15. Dead Horse Arum Lily well, doesn't this one sound absolutely delightful? What a glorious name! The Dead Horse Arum Lily. It's so evocative. I just wonder what beauteous wonders are within. The Dead Horse Arum Lily is an ornamental plant that comes from the islands of Sardinia, Corsica, and the Balearics, and it would have to be ornamental because it has such a terrible stink that it's enough to put you right off eating your tea. The stinky old dead horse Arum Lily is so called on the account of the pungent perfume of rotting meat that emanates from its flowers. This is designed to attract the blowfly, and they're attracted to the stink of carrion as they act as the main pollinators for these flowers. It's gross, but it is effective. The other thing that this plant seems to be able to do is alter its own temperature. Yes, it's able to raise its own temperature through a process called thermogenesis. This is also another way that it can lure flies into its insides in order to get to the pollen and spread it all around. Number 14. Swaddled Baby's Orchid isn't this just the cutest thing you ever saw? Flowers that look like teeny weeny tiny little babies, all wrapped up and cozy in their beds. Ah. Oh. The swaddled baby orchid has been somewhat appropriately named since their flowers seem to resemble a tiny baby that's swathed in blankets. There are overlapping petals, these are the blankets, in waxy soft cream colors. They smell apparently like cinnamon, and they're enclosed in a cone-shaped but kind of chubby little center. That is the baby, if you like that sort of thing. These are a relatively small orchid, the plants only grow to a height of about 18 to 24 inches, and the flowers themselves are unusually large in comparison to the overall size of the plant. It is a highly fragrant plant and blooms in the spring season. This orchid would be discovered by botanists while they were on a 10 year long expedition throughout South America between 1777 and 1788. It's found in parts of the Andes in Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela, and they generally Generally grow on the forest floor in these areas of high elevation. Number 13. Strychnos Electri it is probably a good thing that this recently discovered plant is also 30 million years old and no longer kicking about in any living format. That's right, the Strychnos Electra plant is part of the Astrid family, except that where tomatoes and potatoes and the like are a lot less hazardous to our health. This flower was full of strychnine and other deadly poison. The two specimens were unearthed in an amber mine in the Dominican Republic, and these were two flowers that were found encased in 
solidified resin dating back to between 15 and 30 million years. They've both been perfectly preserved by the amber, which has allowed scientists to establish that these flowers once grew in tropical forests. That's also how they've established that these flowers would also have been highly toxic, mostly in defending the plants from being eaten by herbivores. The thrill of this discovery was really how very unusual it was to find such perfectly preserved specimens. Although amber does famously trap insects and plant bits and pieces, it's almost never so very perfect. It's also filled in some significant gaps in the understanding of the development of the plant in the Caribbean and the tropics, so all the science people are indeed properly pleased about that, even if it just looks like a flower that's stuck in amber to the rest of us. Number 12. Cape Sundew here we have another carnivorous plant. They're all rather fun, aren't they? Well, you know, as, as far as plants are in any way fun. This small plant is native to the Cape area of South Africa, but because it's easy to grow and kind of cool to look at, especially when it's doing all the bug catching, these are a popular choice for plant people to cultivate at home. These sneaky little plants lure their prey in with their snazzy tentacles. These actually produce the plant's digestive juices, which it uses in several ways ways. First is that the juice makes the plant extra shiny and sparkly, which then attracts bugs towards it. Then it uses that same juice to release a chemical that attracts the insects. And finally, that same juice is what it's going to use to digest the creature. When a bug lands within its clutches, the Cape Sundew plant rolls its leaves toward the center. And this is to bring more digestive parts into contact with the unfortunate prey. The prey will then be completely shrouded within an hour and then over a first Further six hours, it will gradually be digested. Mmm, delicious. Number 11. The Cobra Lily. Another one of those pitcher plants, this one is pretty similar to the Nepenthes that we met earlier on. But these guys are bigger and they do like to live in California, hence their other name, the California pitcher plant. So you may have already deduced that this is indeed a carnivorous plant. It's found growing in its native swamps in Northern California and the Southern parts of Oregon in the West of the United States of America. The soil quality in these areas tends to be very poor and offers little to no plants to be able to thrive. So the cobra lily plant has adapted itself to supplement its diet with a little extra meat and who wouldn't like a little supplementary meat from time to time? Well, <laughs> Probably not vegans, but anyways, moving swiftly on. The plant is named after the cobra on the account of the shape of the tall leaves, which are shaped like a striking cobra snake, and the red dangly bits that are also said to look similar to a snake's fangs. These hungry plants entice insects at the mouth of the pitcher, and there are translucent patches that look like windows which are used to tire out and confuse the insects as they try to escape. The insides are slippery, and eventually the captured prey will find itself trapped in the puddle of liquid at the bottom of the tube. These plants don't actually make their own digestive juices, but rather they host bacteria that will break them down for them. This is all rather cruel and unusual, but it is effective. Number 10. Elephant Foot Yam so this is the main component of something called the elephant foot curry. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty relieved that this is a plant-based dish and not what it sounded like. I wouldn't want to imagine all of those elephants out there trying to hop around on three feet. Anyways, this is just a big fat tuber plant. Like any other sort of yam, it's a vegetable that's widely used in plenty of local dishes in the regions where it can be found growing native. These places will include Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the tropical Pacific Islands. As well as growing naturally in these areas, the plant is also cultivated as a cash crop. It's a weird looking plant though. It's got strange flowers which consist of a big purple shoot and that gives off a really smelly odor that is attractive to pollinating insects. It's a long and complicated process to get everything fertilized. These things sometimes are, you know. Then once that's all been achieved, the flowers start to produce fruits and these are also pretty wild looking and nothing if not a little suggestive in their pre presentation. So the edible part of this plant is the tube, and the rest of it is really just showing off. 
Number 9. Golf Ball Cactus Now it's time for another display of balls. On this occasion, it's golf balls, and this plant really does achieve a fairly accurate representation of those particular orbs, does it not? The golf ball cactus, which has another official name that is deeply unpronounceable, actually hails from a very small area of Mexico. It has a very specific pattern on its surface, which is quite beautiful, but also serves an important function. This is actually the cactus's aspiration, You know, the pointy, spiky bits, and they serve to reduce the plant's exposure to the sun by trapping a layer of air next to the body of the cactus. This is doubly official, as it serves to keep the cactus's insides cool in the summer and warm in the winter. What a marvelous idea for a desert-dwelling little plant like this one. And if you look at the cactus close up, it's actually staggeringly beautiful and intricate. The interlaced spines make this look completely unique, and these plants are generally generally found solitary, although may occasionally cluster together. They do have very showy pink flowers when they're in bloom. Otherwise, you might genuinely mistake them for a boring old golf ball until you end up taking a closer look. Number 8. Jellyfish Tree Unique to the Seychelles, the jellyfish tree is bound up in a lot of stories and history on these islands. The tree was named Medusagain after the mythical figure in Greek mythology Medusa with all the snakes for her hair. But the tree has since become more popularly known as the jellyfish tree for having fruit shaped like these creatures. There's not a whole lot that you can say about the jellyfish tree. These things can reach around 49 feet tall and have dense foliage. Jellyfish shaped fruit and dark bark, which is notable for its distinctive fissures. It can withstand drought and has many features more often associated with plants in arid conditions. Despite the fact that the Seychelles are rather moist, this plant was believed to have actually gone extinct until a few would be discovered to have survived back in the 1970s. They're now still critically endangered, and it's believed that there may be fewer than 100 mature jellyfish trees left in the world. Number 7. Black Bat Flower or Devil Flower also known as the devil flower and the cat's whiskers, the black bat flower has pretty much cornered all the Halloween-based monikers that you can imagine. But does it deserve its spooky associations? The black bat flower is actually an unusual tropical herb that can be found in Southeast Asia. It belongs to the same family as yams. The plants themselves form slim tubers and are completed with bright green leaves. These are generally evergreen, but can be a bit fickle depending on how the seasons change. The flowers do set atop strong stems and generally appear in abundance in late summer and fall. The flowers are indeed black and do bear a resemblance to bat wings, but they're also adorned with a massive set of drooping green whiskers called bracteoles that dangle all around them. There also exists a white bat flower, and for something so cool looking and with all the spooky witchy names, you would more than likely expect it to be used in potions or at least be a little hallucinogenic or poisonous or something, but ho-hum, I guess you can't have it all. Number 6. Hammer Orchid Orchids are usually kind of cool and sculptural, and they also come in so many different varieties that a whole heap of them seem to have made it onto our list today. And next up, we have the hammer orchid, which suggests that it may have a certain kind of appearance, but it's actually totally disgusting looking. Yes, the hammer orchid looks like it has a gross skin condition, which may be warts or even perhaps something much more oozing and infectious. Although the world of orchids is full of great beauties and elegant wonders, the hammer orchid is absolutely repulsive. However, its lack of good looks are not necessarily to be held against these plants. They are in fact very effective at getting themselves pollinated by insects. The way they do this is to mimic the insects themselves. The insects in question then attempts to mate with the flower and a whole lot of pollination takes place. Hammer orchids all do this and they're great deceivers and frankly, rather like the players of the plant world. They trick wasps in 
into thinking that they're beautiful lady wasps, so the male wasps get all hot under the collar and start whispering all of those sweet nothings, getting his manhood involved in the situation. And in the classic style of the wasps in Throes of Passion, the male tries to fly off with the female, except she's not gonna budge because she's actually an orchid. Meanwhile, all this waggling about is having the desired effect for the plant that's having all of its reproductive structures tickled in exactly the right way. <laughs> Number 5. Naked Man Orchid while upon first glance this orchid, you may be forgiven for wondering why in the world it's known as the Naked Man Orchid, a second, closer look will give you all of the information you desire. While not as saucy as the name might suggest, the shape of this orchid's flowers, or the petals that are up the flowers, look like little men with big hats on. It's uncanny, as if someone has cut out a lot of the perfect paper dolls and fixed them to the stem. These flowers are commonly found throughout the Mediterranean regions of Greece, Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, the Middle East, Turkey, Malta, and Cyprus. They thrive on scrubby areas, beside tracks on old farmland, and close to the coastal areas and will flow during April and May. But what do you think of this cheeky plant? How cool is it that plants can be so diverse and interesting looking and also hide such weird shapes as this one? I kind of love it, don't you? Number 4. Hidenora Well, this one's an ugly looking plant. Actually, it's kind of disturbing, like staring into a bunch of howling mouths or other gaping orifices. And they're all inflamed. Yes, this is one unpleasant looking plant, and if I had lived my whole life without looking at it, then that would have been just fine, thank you very much. But here we are in nightmare territory, so as if it wasn't creepy enough to look at, this plant is also a parasitic one, which just adds that David Cronenberg style body horror aesthetic. It has no leaves, and only emerges above the ground to flower, if you can even call it that. This is known as the strangest plant in the world and I can see why. But what do you think? Would you like to have these in your garden? Or are they now populating your nightmares and busting through the chests of your spaceship crew? Number 3. Dancing Plant after that, we all deserve something a bit nicer to look at, perhaps something a bit cuter as well. I need to scrub all of those images off of my eyeballs. This tropical Asian shrub is known as the telegraph plant, the semaphore plant, and my favorite, the dancing plant. This is because it's actually one of the very few plants that are actually capable of rapid motion. It can actually be found all throughout Asia and even on a few remote islands of the South Pacific. The plant produces little purple flowers and a lot of small leaflets. It is these little leaves that you can actually see moving with the naked eye. It may be that the reason for this is to track the sun, much like sunflowers turn to maximize their sun exposure throughout the day. It's believed that these leaves are doing the same to maximize their own light by following the sunlight. The only problem with this idea is that it actually uses a lot of energy to do that, so in some respects, it's kind of self-defeating. Anywho, there's another slightly more fun possibility that the plants are waggling around so as to deter any predators or indeed prevent butterflies butterflies from laying their eggs on the plant by mimicking the movement of a butterfly. And we all know the perils of a very hungry caterpillar. Whichever reason it may be, the fact of the matter is that this plant literally dances, it wiggles about all the live long day, and we can see it doing so, and that all by itself is kind of amazing. Number 2. The Death Apple Tree with such an inviting name, I wonder what on earth is up with this unusual plant. I mean, I could not possibly guess. The death apple tree is considered by many to be the world's most dangerous tree, a badge of honor that is no doubt pretty proud to sport. I mean, none of the other trees are going to mess with it now, are they? The death apple tree also goes by the name of Macaneal. It bears small apple-like fruits, but these are so poisonous that the Spanish conquerors, when they first encountered it, named it La Manzanilla de la Muerte, or the Little Apple of Death. 
what a fun one. It's actually so very poisonous indeed that the indigenous people of the region use the sap of this tree to poison the tips of their arrows and to contaminate the invader's water supply. It's not known that anyone in recent times has actually died from this fruit, but nonetheless, if you were to bite one of these little apples of death, you would not have the most pleasant of experiences. The sweetness of that apple would soon give way to an intense and overpowering burning sensation that would cause severe swelling, blistering, and burning around your mouth and in your throat. You would then most likely experience severe digestive troubles. But the main trouble is, this particular plant isn't satisfied with just killing you with poison apples. It can also blind you if you happen to be caught in a rainstorm beneath one or near the smoke from any part of one that might be on fire. It will offer you lesions of the skin and such delights even if you just touch one leaf. So word to the wise, don't do that. Number 1. Bleeding Heart Plant the plant known as the bleeding heart, or the fallopian buds, or the Asian bleeding heart, is a popular plant amongst gardening enthusiasts because it really does look like a bleeding heart. While that may not sound like the most appealing image, it actually is rather pretty, isn't it? While the flower is native to northern China, Siberia, Korea, and Japan, as well as some woodlands of North America, it is now found in gardens all over the world where it's valued for its springtime flowers of pink and white. It was originally introduced to England all the way back in 1810 when it was brought over from China, but it somehow didn't quite take and would then be reintroduced in 1846 when it stuck firm to both the landscape and the imaginations of Victorian Britain, who were inexplicably charmed by the notion of fairy gardens and other such romantic silliness. Historically, this plant would be used in traditional Chinese medicine, where its root is said to have been used for detoxifying and improving the circulation of the blood. It's also said to eliminate wind, which is hilarious. But don't just go and chomp on it in your nan's backyard. The leaves are actually poisonous and can give you a whole range of unpleasant neurological symptoms. Some perhaps just opt for some wind ease instead. Well, who the heck had any idea just how weird and wonderful that plants could possibly be? Which of these plants has got you rushing off to dig in your garden? And which ones are going going to haunt your nightmares. As always, let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.